Hello, my name is Emma Yandel. Welcome to Cooper Day. I'm the Curator and Collections Manager at Chawton House and I'm going to talk to you about the acquisition that inspired today's programme, the copy of William Cooper's Poems, published in 1782, that was held in the library of Godmersham Park. Godmersham Park was the main residence in Kent of Jane Austen's brother Edward, who also owned Chawton House, having been inherited by the wealthy Knight family and later changing his own surname to Knight. The reason why we at Chawton House wanted to acquire this work is because of its links with Jane Austen. We know that Jane Austen spent a lot of time at her brother Edward's estate in Kent, around 10 months in total of her life living at Godmersham Park. We know from her own letters that she lived in the library, other than for meals. So we know that this was a space that was very familiar to her. William Cooper is a poet not only described as her favourite poet by her brother Henry um, in his preface to Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, published just after her death, but Cooper is also a writer that we see appearing in her novels, both in direct manners through quotation, but also through the themes and ideas that we see within his work. Now what we refer to as the Godmission Cooper are two volumes bound together at a later date into a set. One is uh, William Cooper's Collected Poems that was published in 1782. And if you look at um, the contents page for this first volume, you'll get a sense of the sort of topics that Cooper wrote about and um, the direction that his verse takes. Now, what's particularly interesting about this specific copy is that it has what is known as the suppressed preface. This was a preface written by Cooper's friend, John Newton, that um, went to print but was deemed to be far too evangelical by his publisher and pulled at the last minute, making it notoriously rare. Now the second volume contains Cooper's most famous work, his long poem, The Task, that was published in 1785. In these verses he discusses his political views stridently for abolition of slavery and his desire for the features and pace of rural life to be preserved. So now that I've got to show you the Godmersham copy of William Cooper's poems, I want to talk through the story of how we actually managed to bring them back to Chilton House. And that story cannot be told without Deb Barnum, who's going to talk to us on behalf of Gloss, or the Godmersham Lost Sheep Society, she'll go on to explain that name, who were instrumental in enabling us to acquire this work. Deb is a former law librarian. She's now the owner of Bygone Books, an online shop of fine and collectible books and ephemera based in Bluffton, South Carolina. She co-founded the Jane Austen Society of North America in Vermont and is an indefatigable champion for Chawton House on behalf of Gloss, searching for works that were once held in Edward Austen's library, as recorded by its catalogue of 1818, with the aim of recording their whereabouts, adding them to an online um, virtual library called Reading with Austen, and if possible, acquiring them and actually returning them to Chawton House for posterity. So, hello. Deb, it's so nice of you to uh, to talk to us and it's wonderful to have you here. Um, I think that the first question that uh, people will have is really, what is the Reading with Austin project? And then from that, what is GLOSS? What does GLOSS stand for? So the Reading with Austin project is, um, it was started by Peter Saber, professor at McGill University and he's the head of the Bernie Center. And, um, I think it was like in 2015 that he was at Chawton and he saw these catalogs of the 1818 catalog of Edward Austin's um, Godmersham Park Library. And of course, you right away you look at that and you realize, well, Jane Austen would have been in that library a number of times. And so that catalog is a listing of books she had access to and probably read when she was at Godmersham. So he started this, he wanted to create a virtual library um, to show exactly what she would have seen. And that's been done now. It was launched in 2018 and it's on there. Anybody can go in and look and you can go actually pull a book off a shelf and you look at it. Yes. And as you said, that's thanks to the Gomeshin Library catalog, um, which is very precise on the locations of the mm -hmm. books. So it's yes. not just having the book 
in that virtual room, it's saying, okay, well, as with the Cooper, South case, column one, shelf three, that's exactly where yeah. it was. So you can yeah. situate it with the books around it. And I think that's what's so exciting and novel about, about the project. So the catalog lists about 1,200 books. There, there should be about 700 books that are missing. So they were sold off at some point. And he um, was able to get all the night collection has about 500 of these books that were in that original catalog. And they are there at Chawton House on loan from uh, the Knight family, Richard Knight. So those pictures we were able to get. And then it was a question of finding any other books anywhere else. He's assuming there are about 250 that we should be able to locate at some point. How it started, the gloss, so it's the Godmersham Lost Sheep Society. <laughs> and it was started by Peter and Jillian Dow, the former executive director of Chawton House, and Janine Barkas. And I came in early on because Janine asked me to um, look at these book plates that were in there. Some of the universities that if they list the provenance of a book in their catalog, it'll say Montague George Knight, who was Edward Knight's grandson, he, he was very prone to putting his book plates in um, many of these books that had been in his grandfather's collection and on his own. So he's added books also. So I did the research on these book plates and then I started thinking, and we all did, why we can search for this provenance. And what we have ended up finding are about 55 books in different libraries all over the world. There are a number in private collections and Gloss has been able to return about 12 books to Charlton House that have come up for auction or um, you know, booksellers. So that's what we do. We search for those, we find them and we just research and look and it's always serendipitous really what, what shows up, how and when. And of course, Jane Austen in several letters wrote about being in that very library sitting in the, in the chairs and the fire. And she called it mistress of all I survey as, as she's sitting which, there. And which so, of course is, 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 a, is a quote from Cooper, is a, yes, is a it is. of a quote from Cooper. Yes. Which is wonderful because it is, it is exciting to imagine that she mm -hmm. could have just been reading the, the, the line that she's paraphrasing in this very copy. In, exactly. In, in, in that library, which is, yes. which is wonderful. Yeah. And to give people a little bit of background, um, we really are only able to do this research because of the library catalogue. So that was sort of a state of the library in 1818, including if a book was off the shelf then, maybe it wasn't, uh, it wasn't written exactly. down. It was, it was an audit of what was there. Yeah. So we have that catalogue, and obviously that's 1818, is the, the year after Austin died. Um, but then we have another catalogue, which is of the library at Chawton House. So after those books were moved from Gobbleton Park to Chawton House, um, and that's from 1908. So we have these sort of two places when you can trace a book. It was here at this point. Was it still here at this point? But after mm -hmm. that, um, books were sold. And the reason why these books have traveled all around the world is because for various reasons, the need to raise finances, the books were being sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's 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 really there where the story stops for a lot of different mm -hmm. books. Yeah. And um, so actually that might be quite a, a good opportunity for you to talk about finding the Cooper and why you, I know you've described it sort of as the holy grail for Gloss, mm -hmm. like this is the volume that we most want to get back. So how did the Cooper sort of come up on your, on your radar through your searches? Well, as soon as Peter started his project that, the Cooper was for sale at Quaritch in, in the UK for, uh, for a while. We knew it was there right from the beginning and it was just unattainable. And it always sat there and Quaritch was fabulous about it. They agreed to hold it for us until we could raise the funds. And we just felt this was never going to happen. I should say that funds coming into Gloss are, uh, we're so lucky to have such generous supporters who are willing to commit their own funds and fundraising efforts to create the money in, in order for us to be able to purchase this. So that's that's what you mean when you say having the money and to do it. Of course, it's it's Cooper who in um, 
the uh, the notice to Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, her brother Henry says was her favourite poet. And uh, Cooper, who appears in Mansfield Park, who appears in Sense Sensibility, who we know that the family loved. So mm -hmm. when we look at this volume, we think, well, Jane Austen spent all this time in this library. She wouldn't have brought her own copy of, of Cooper's poems, highly unlikely. Right. How, yeah. how often might she have thumbed through this and taken inspiration from his words in yeah. this exact book? Yeah. And that's, that's sort of the thrill of it alongside the, um, the possibilities for new, new research around it, because there are some tantalizing, unattributed uh, annotations, mm -hmm. well, underlinings, I should say, in yes. this work at least for me, of the thrill of holding something that perhaps mm. she held in her hand with thinking, yeah. how could reading this have informed her own uh, creative process and, and how might it have shown in, in her literature? The quotations, the direct quotations that yes. we have about yeah. her in, in her novels tend yeah. much towards, more towards the the longing for the natural world to not be changed, uh, for yes. home and for uh, uh, retirement away from sort of too much clamor. It is interesting. And of course it's become a, um, a, a new scholarly venture really of finding book owners. What were they reading? Yes. And it's a, it, is, it becomes automatically a detective story because you want to find books with someone's name. Yes. Not everybody who sees the Montague George Knight of Chawton book plate connects it to Jane Austen. So Gloss, Peter's original brainchild, Janine, Gillian, yourself, yes. who, who's, who makes up Gloss today? People who have either found books and donated them to us, um, people who have just given donations because they know about the project, and people who have helped with research, there are people out there doing research of their own and they'll suddenly find something and they'll go, oh my gosh, is this? <laughs> well, well, if people if people want to support um, Gloss, and as, as you've said, we at Chawton House are incredibly lucky to have both the academic minds and the sort of indefatigable detective work from people like yourself, but also the funds that you've been able to raise because mm -hmm. we're currently not in a position to have a budget for such acquisitions right. Right. and without that support we just yeah. wouldn't be able to bring them home to Chawton House where obviously mm -hmm. anyone can now yeah. ask to get in touch with me mm -hmm. and um and research them so if people want to get involved either with their late night googling for provenance or financially <laughs> how where should I where should we direct them well they can they can look at the reading with Austin website and there's contact information on that or they can come to the blog and there's contact information Everybody, if you're near a larger library, just check your own library. Yeah. Every online catalog includes that provenance of the details about a book. And if it if they all did, it would be very easy. We could search everything on WorldCat, but it doesn't work out yeah. that way. So it's yeah. like a question of researching each library individually. You know, so it's all it's it's all ongoing, and that's why as a project, um, and there was a website, it's it's continually being updated. And as you say, with the aim of being able yes. to offer this sort of as complete as possible virtual library of Godmission Park. Yes. But when you go into each individual volume, you can see where it's located. Mm -hmm. So you can see yeah. whether you could come and see it at Chawton or whether it's in the US, whether it's in the Netherlands or anywhere. I do think the detective work, it is fun. And um, it, my favorite find of all, and I don't think Peter will mind saying this, in Gazetteer was at McGill University where Peter works literally in the library below, just below <laughs> his office. <laughs> and he had no idea that it was there. So that was one of the best finds. Um, but there are finds all over the world. There's one in Australia. Um, there's uh, a good number in the US actually it's wonderful yeah. we're so um we're so grateful for your support and for everyone at gloss and yeah. um we're also really grateful to the support of the friends of national libraries who also provided a significant amount of funds to enable us to bring these back to Chawton. Yes. and so to have been able to secure it at the end of last year which obviously for everyone was a really difficult year for yeah. us it was it was yeah. just such an amazing good news story to have had such a big yes, it was it was a great news story yeah. 
I hope you enjoyed this first in-depth look at the God Mission copy of Cooper's Poems, which will be displayed here at Chawton House uh, when we are able to open again on the 17th of May. Thank you very much. Thank you.